Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video about Windows Firewall. In this video, we'll start off by talking about why we need a firewall at all. And then we'll go in and take a look at Windows Firewall itself. And we'll take a look at the three different firewall profiles, domain, private, and public. And then we'll see how to actually filter inbound and outbound traffic. And then I'll show you how to configure the whole thing using group policy. So first of all, why do we need a firewall? Well, firewalls are used to control data traveling in and out of a computer or network. Matter of fact, most typically, you think of a firewall as being something that protects a network. But in this case, Windows Firewall is something that protects the individual computer. So firewalls can be in many different places. Now without firewalls, we would be completely vulnerable to the malicious efforts of our attackers. If we didn't have firewalls, anybody who wanted to cause harm to a network could simply just communicate with that network and what they communicate is with malicious data such as viruses, worms, Trojan horses, you name it. They would just go ahead and send it on in and there would be no firewall there to filter what is allowed and what is not allowed. So that's why we need a firewall. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at Windows Firewall in Server 2008. For this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and use New York Member 1. Now there is a certain level of significance this time around to using New York Member 1. And that significance is we have previously already set up this server as a remote access server. And so what that means is this guy is touching the outside world. With any server that is touching the outside world, Windows Firewall plays a much stronger role and it has much greater significance because you need to be that much more secure in that particular environment as opposed to servers that are just on the protected inside network. So anyway, let's go ahead and connect to New York member one now. And the first thing I want to show you on this server is I want to show you the way people typically think to control Windows Firewall. And that is by going to the control panel. So we're going to click start and then control panel. And down here you'll see Windows Firewall. I'm going to double click on Windows Firewall and you will see that right now I get the red shield with an X in it that says your computer is not protected. It wants me to turn on Windows Firewall. See it's currently off. Now if I want to go ahead and turn it on there's a link here for turning firewall on or off. And when I click on that link you'll see here that I have the ability to, it's currently off, I can turn it on. When I turn it on and then click OK, watch what happens. Although the verbiage here changed, we still have a red bar, or red shield, and an X through it. Because it says Windows Firewall is not using the recommended settings. Now why is it not using the recommended settings? It says Windows Firewall is on, what would be recommended that, that's not in place? Well. Right down here, I want you to notice it says network location, domain network. The domain is one of the three firewall profiles that exist in Windows Server 2008. And when you turn Windows Firewall on or off through the control panel, you only affect that one profile. I'm going to show you another utility here where you can see all the profiles at the same time. So let's go ahead and close this and close control panel. And then I'm going to go down to start, click on administrative tools, and here we have Windows Firewall with advanced security. Now this tool shows me all three profiles and here you'll see the domain profile is the active profile. That's because that's the network that we're on. Now this network is determined when you first establish connectivity. You may have seen this, and where it's most common is actually when you are working, well, I'd say with wireless networks, because you're constantly connecting to new networks. Every time you connect to a network, you are prompted to tell it what type of network is this. Is this a private network, a domain network, or possibly a public network? And when you choose, that's what determines which of these three profiles is active. Now. Why did it say that we're not using the recommended settings? Well, 
the domain profile, Windows Firewall is turned on. On the private profile, Windows Firewall is turned on. But on the public profile, Windows Firewall is off. And the funny thing is, if anything, that is exactly opposite of what I would recommend if you only were going to turn one profile on. I mean, if I had to pick one profile that we're going to enable Windows Firewall, it would be the public profile. Okay, because basically, just to sum up what these different profiles are, the domain profile is just what it sounds like when you're connected to an Active Directory domain. Your private profile applies anytime you're on a private internal secure network. And, and I will tell you, this would be basically if you were in a private network that is not a domain, but yet you were still on an internal network, maybe like your home network something that you still feel is an internal secure network and then the public profile is just what it sounds like you're out in the public you're you're out where you have no control over the network so you can see why this would be the one to have on now if we want to change these settings go ahead and right click on Windows Firewall and Advanced Security and select properties and here you'll see we have a tab for the domain private and public profiles You'll see the domain profile is on, the private profile is on, and the public profile is off. So I can click this and select on, click OK, and you will see that all three are now on. Now, just for kicks, just to show you what has happened, let's go back to Control Panel. Start, Control Panel, Windows Firewall. Haha! -ha! Now we get the green bar and the green shield and the checkbox. Windows Firewall is helping to protect your computer and Microsoft is happy. <laughs> Alright, so that's just to show you what Microsoft wants and it also shows you how you have control here. And I will tell you that if I were to turn the Windows Firewall off, not only do you go back to this, but if we go back to, oh, there we go, if we go back to our Windows Firewall with Advanced Security tool, and I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard to refresh the screen. You will see here that the domain profile, the Windows Firewall, is turned off, whereas private and public are still on. All right, well, we don't want that, so let me go back to Control Panel and turn this back on again. Click OK, get a nice pretty green bar, and we're good to go. Now, we obviously also could have done this. Let me close out of here, and actually, let's get the control panel closed. We could have done that back here as well. Could have easily just right-clicked, went to Properties, and done it here. You'll notice it's already on, though, because we did it in the control panel. All I have to do is hit F5 again, and we see that it's on on all three profiles. So now that we have Windows Firewall on, we need to talk a little bit about filtering. Filtering is one of the main keys to, you know, the, the actual purpose to a firewall. It's how we control what comes in and what goes out. And you'll see here that we have inbound rules and we have outbound rules as far as filtering goes. And let me tell you what, by default, with the exception of significant networking components that are required just to make this computer function within the domain, the default for inbound is that pretty much everything's blocked. You don't want stuff coming in to this computer unless you know exactly what it is. And a lot of what is on has to do with if there is a reply. I mean, here you'll see there's core networking, but there's also if it's a reply. If you've made a request and now a reply is coming back to that request, that is on by default, whereas the outbound rules, by default, almost everything is on. And the reason just about everything is on with outbound is because there's not a whole lot of danger in sending stuff out. Because the malicious code needs to come in in order for bad things to go out. But here's the danger in having your outbound rules set to everything is okay to travel out and that is if for some reason some malicious code has gotten onto your computer that malicious code may instruct the computer to send maybe some confidential data out and you don't want certain types of data 
being able to get out in certain fashions. So there are reasons for controlling outbound traffic, but typically it's the inbound traffic that you want to have the most control over. Now, uh, first thing I want to do here is let me go ahead and get rid of this Actions tab. And we'll go View, Customize, Actions Pane. All right, it's gone. All right, that just allows us to see a few more columns, although you'll notice there's still many more to go. And this really shows us everything that has to do with these rules. Now, what I want to do is rather than looking at the existing rules that are already there, and there are a lot of them. I mean, there there is quite a long list of rules. Rather than looking at those existing rules, let's create a new one. So the way you do this is right click and select new rule. Now, the first thing it's going to ask you is the rule type. Is it a program rule, which has to do with a rule that's going to associate itself with a specific program? There are different applications that you may have on your server, and those applications may have specific connectivity needs. So that would be an example of a program rule. A port rule is where you use a specific TCP or UDP port. You can use many of the predefined rules, as I mentioned just a moment ago. There are a lot of them. Or you can create just a complete custom rule altogether. Well, I will tell you that realistically, the two most common rules you're going to create are going to be program rules when you have a specific application that has connectivity needs to the outside world. And quite frankly, you're usually going to have instructions that will come with that application saying, hey, here are the things you need to do to allow this program to work on the computer. And sometimes those instructions, even though it may be a specific application, are going to tell you to create a port rule. There are certain applications that are going to say, hey, for connectivity, you need to open up port number blah, blah, blah. So port is probably the number one rule that you would create. So we're going to go with that one. Now let me move this window up just a little bit here so we can see it. All right, port rule, next. Now, because we said we're going to do a port rule, it then says, well, all right, do we want a TCP port or a UDP port? So we're going to go ahead and we'll say a TCP port. And then we need to pick the specific port. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need to be familiar with the port that is being used for whatever the purpose is that, that, that you're trying to open this up. As a for instance, if we wanted to allow, maybe this was a DNS server and we want to allow DNS queries, well, then we may want TCP port 53, because 53 happens to be for DNS. Or if we wanted, maybe this was a web server and we wanted to allow HTTP lookup, well, that would be port 80. Matter of fact, down here you'll notice the examples they give are 80, 443, which is HTTP with SSL or 8080, which would be if we were using like an ISA server. So anyway, we can pick whatever port we want and then go ahead and click Next. Now, are we going to allow this connection? Are we going to block this connection? Because sometimes the rule is not to specifically allow it, but to specifically deny this type of connectivity. Or we can even allow, but with conditions. And if we allow connection, if it's secure, well, then we can, first of all, require that the connection is encrypted. And or we could check this box. This is a very interesting box, override block rules. This would override another rule that may be blocking this particular port. And this, you'll notice, is if a specific tool must always be available. Maybe there's a blanket rule that you have that says block everything you know, within a certain range. And if you want to override that rule, you have that checkbox. But even more specifically than these two checkboxes here, once you say allow if it's secure, the next screen will then also ask you to base it off of connectivity from certain computers and or from, and I shouldn't even say and or, because you have to allow a connection, you have to pick at least one computer but you could also do from certain users. And all you would do is, quite frankly, just check the box, click Add, and then add the specific computer. So let's say if I put NY Vista 1, 
So that's one of our clients out there. Maybe I want to allow DNS lookup from that client. Click check names, all right, it found it correctly, click OK. And we'll say from all users, we'll leave that alone. So I'll go ahead and click next. For which profiles will this rule apply? You can choose to only have this rule apply if you are in a certain environment. Or you can do it for all environments. You choose. In this case, I'll leave it alone for, I'll, I'll just say for all profiles. Because that's, that's the default and really that is typical unless you have a specific scenario that you are allowing things in a certain direction. And I will tell you, maybe these DNS lookups, matter of fact, you know what, let's clear the boxes. We're going to say the DNS lookups are only okay if we're in our domain environment. If for some reason this server were to travel outside that domain environment, I don't want to allow that anymore. All right, let's go ahead and click on next. And now we just give it a name, DNS lookup. And we could put in a description explaining what it is so that when we go back, maybe DNS lookup's not descript enough. In this case, it probably is. And finish. And now you'll see here that we have an additional rule called DNS lookup. You'll see here that it is part of the domain profile. It is enabled. Let me scroll over a little bit. The action is that we said allow, but only if it's a secure environment. Okay, so that's why it doesn't say allow. It says secure. We did not do it as an override. We just did it as a regular old rule. Any program from any address. TCP port 53, coming from any remote port, any users, and the allowed computers, although you can't quite see it. If I put my cursor on it, you can see there it says Global Mantics New York Vista 1. So we have created a rule. And I'll tell you what, these rules come in very, very handy when you want to control data traveling in and out of your computer. Now I will tell you that there is one other significant piece to these rules and that is that you want to be careful about the scope of the rule when picking what profile or certain rules actually will point blank say what's the scope and that's where you say what computers what users things like that this time it wasn't actually called scope that wasn't the verbiage that was used but that really was what it was and that is very very significant if you really want to have good control over who gets in, what gets in, when, why, and how. So now that we see how to set up a rule, let's actually set up one and watch it work. Now the rule that I want to set up is one that is not actually that uncommon and in a moment you'll see that it's it's actually the example that Microsoft builds right into the operating system. But let's say on this particular server you want to prevent users from being able to browse the internet. Now that's not that uncommon at all. It is a really good idea to stop people from using a server. There's really no reason to ever use a server to browse the internet. Servers are there to provide services. Your client machines are there for browsing the internet. So how will we do this? Well, before we get into the how, let's first of all, let's, let's see if we can currently browse the internet. And so I'm going to go down here to Internet Explorer, and let's see if I can get to, oh, let's go to trainsignal.com. So I'll just put in trainsignal.com, and sure enough, there we go, we get to the TrainSignal website. So currently, I can browse the web. And the reason why, let me go ahead and close this, the reason why is because the default for outbound, and actually let me show you this, I'm going to right click on Windows Firewall with Advanced Security and go to Properties. The default for outbound connections is Allow. Just like I was saying before, the default for inbound is block everything except for what I specifically allow and the default for outbound is allow everything except for what I block. So let me cancel out of here and let's do just that. Let's block this ability through an outbound rule. I'm going to do this by right-clicking on Outbound Rules and selecting New Rule. In the new Outbound Rule Wizard, let me move this up a little so we can see it, what we're going to do is in this case 
we could create a port rule just like we did in the last example with blocking DNS queries with port 53. We could do this by blocking port 80 or port 443 or the different ports that are used for web browsing. But the problem there is that there may be other services and programs running on this server that might need those ports in order to do their duties. All we want to do is prevent web browsing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a program rule. And here's the thing. This particular server only has Internet Explorer installed as a web browser. If you have a server that has additional web browsers installed, well then you would have to create additional program rules to block those web browsers as well. But in this case, it's only Internet Explorer, and we can always put other protection in place that prevents the installation of other software and thereby protecting against other web browsers being installed just to be able to get out to the internet. So I'm going to select program rule, click next, and this is where I was talking about Microsoft's example happens to be blocking Internet Explorer. So I'm going to click on browse, and I have to go in and find the executable for Internet Explorer. So I'm going to go into my computer here, go to the C drive, go to program files, Internet Explorer, and then here is ieexplorer.exe. That is the executable for Internet Explorer. And as you can see, I could have just typed that in, the same as the example they had here. I find browsing and clicking a lot easier than typing this whole thing out personally. But either way, it would have been just fine. Now that I have the program path entered, I'm going to click Next. I'm going to block the connection. So I'm blocking outbound connections from Internet Explorer. Next. And now I get to choose which profile this rule will apply to. Now, the reality is, is I could just do the domain profile, because you know, that's the one that we're on right now. That's the active one. We know that to be true. But if we truly want to make sure that this server never is able to get out via Internet Explorer, then we check the boxes for all profiles in case an additional network connection is ever made on this server. Let's go ahead and click on Next. Give it a name block web browsing and finish and we now have a rule for the blocking of web browsing so now let's go see if it worked I'm gonna go ahead and click on Internet Explorer attempt to go to train signals website once again and we are denied Internet Explorer cannot display the web page and it really doesn't matter what web page I'm looking for I could put in Microsoft I don't get there. I can put in Google. I don't get there. I have successfully prevented Internet Explorer from making outbound connections using an outbound rule through Windows Firewall. And that's how that works. So let's go ahead and close Internet Explorer. What I want to show you now is I want to show you how to do this using group policy so that you control multiple servers at the same time. So let me go ahead and minimize New York member one. And what we need to do is we need to connect to New York DC one because we have to go to a domain controller in order to affect group policy. So let me connect now. On New York DC one, I'm going to click start, administrative tools, and here we have group policy management. Now, as I've done before in, in previous videos, we're going to go to the default domain policy and edit that. But the reality is, is that you would want to pick a group policy that you know. In, in you know, there's that. Here's here comes that same term I just used a minute ago, which is scope. You want to use a group policy that covers the scope of who you want to affect, or what computers, I should say, you want to affect. So under computer configuration, I'm going to expand policies, and then I'm going to expand Windows settings. I'm going to expand security settings. And then once we're in the security settings, if you look down here, you'll see we have, and you know, let me move this over to the right just a little bit so we can see a little more of that. Here we have Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. Look familiar? Let me go ahead and expand that. And then here, again, we see the actual link for Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. It's a little, it's a little goofy because it kind of duplicates, but that's okay as long as we know to go in. 
you go ahead and click on here and you will see that we have an interface that is very similar to what we just had over in the local utility. Now if I were to go over here and click on Windows Firewall Properties, you will see that we have our domain, private, and public profile tabs. So that's kind of cool, just like we had before. Or if I right click on here, Properties, same thing. Okay, if I scroll down, you see here we have our inbound and our outbound rules. So it, it's pretty cool. We have pretty much the same interface. Matter of fact, again, just to show you the interface, I can expand that. Just kind of showing you, you know, it's kind of weird. In group, when I get into group policy, I, I like using the links, whereas when I'm in the tool, even though those links were there in the action pane, I end up going back to the old right click. So you can do it either way in either tool, but the cool part is, is noticing that group policy allows you pretty much to use the same interface that you're familiar with on the local machine. The only difference is once I set it up here, well now I'm controlling all computers that fall within the scope of wherever this policy exists. And in this case, it's the default domain policy, so it would affect all computers within the domain. That's a great way to, to get all of your computers set up with a Windows Firewall policy at the same time. Now the other thing I'd like to show you here in group policy, let me go ahead and put this all away, is I'm going to take you to a different location. Okay, This time we're going to go to Computer Configuration, Policies, and this time instead of going down here to Windows Settings, we're going to go to Administrative Templates. Under Administrative Templates, we're going to expand Network, and then Network Connections, and then here we have Windows Firewall. And in here, you'll see that we have, and let me go ahead and go to standards so we have a little more room. You'll see that we get to a little bit more of an old-fashioned version of group policy, where we have specific settings to put in place. And we could do the domain profile or just simply the standard profile. And the difference here is that this is where we would affect Windows Firewall on our Windows XP or Windows Server 2003 computers as opposed to the other location really is going to only affect server 2008 computers because basically these older operating systems well they don't have the windows firewall with the advanced security options so that's that's new to windows server 2008 so just so you know this is where you would affect older operating systems within your domain if you wanted to have control over them well, that's pretty much it for Windows Firewall, and after watching this video, you should now know how to turn Windows Firewall on or off, and of course we can do that either in Control Panel, or it could also be done through the Windows Firewall and Advanced Security Utility. You should know how to control the status of Windows Firewall, not just for the active profile, but for all three profiles, and recognize which profile is currently active. You should now know how to create inbound and outbound filter rules. And most importantly, I think, you should know how to control the status of Windows Firewall on all of the computers in your network by using group policy. All right, well, we're, we're coming down to the final stretch here, and might be time for uh, a little break, a little refreshment. So why don't you go ahead and get yourself something to drink, and, well, I'll see you in the next video.